It started 38 years ago when I was working my first Winter Olympics in Innsbruck, Austria. Dick Button, who should know, watched the Soviet pair, Lyudmila Belousova and Oleg Protopopov, in their very artistic gold medal performance. Then he said to me, you know, you can teach a child to play the minute waltz in a minute, but that doesn't make them an artist. These people are artists. Well, the Russians have won the pairs competition ever since. And now a young pair from Canada, after long years of frustration, has a chance to end the longest streak in Winter Olympics history. I do definitely believe in fate. And I think that since I was little, I always had this dream to become the best figure skater. I just had that, and I never let it go. David and I both want to be number one, and we just have that drive. And I think it's, it's in here, and it's, it's never gone away, even though we've been through some really down times, it's never gone away. We know where we're going, and we know where we want to go, and we know what it takes to get there. Their road to success hasn't been easy. Only a few years ago, Jamie Saleh and David Peltier considered ending their respective skating careers. At the time, Jamie was skating singles and going nowhere, while David was on his third pair's partner. I just didn't know what I wanted. I kind of lost my focus, and it was really disheartening for me because I was waiting for that right partner, and uh, there was no one to skate with. To hear my own peer say to me, um, I can't believe you're still skating. Uh, and, and I didn't even say it jokingly, but you, you knew, and it hit you right here, you know? It, it made you feel kind of like, am I doing the right thing? And then it was almost embarrassing. Like I would step up going, oh, this is a joke. After 98, I was 24, 25. Uh, it's time to do something of my life. It's time to make a living. And if I can't find a partner uh, that can help me get to where I want, well, you know, let's call it quit and that's it. But they didn't quit, and in March of 98, David came to Edmonton for a tryout with Jamie. When he got here and we stepped on the ice, I knew as soon as I took his hand, it just clicked. Like, it was so on. It's like we didn't even miss a beat. It was easy to skate again. We're just, you know, we're on the same track. We're just basically lucky to have found our skating soulmate, I guess. After the years of frustration, do they really think they can end a four-decade dynasty? Of course I know the history of pair skating and who's won the Olympics the last 30, 40 years, but it doesn't matter to us. Like, Dave and I have not gone out the last, the past competitions and, and thought, you know, we have to beat the Russians because they always win. It's the last thing we think about. I feel like I'm one with him. My fear kind of disappears if I had anything or any doubts. And when we take each other's hand, there's just this instant bond. And it's like, I feel his energy and he feels my energy. And I think that that's kind of a chemistry that people see when we skate. Bob, you know those Canadians are really fighting history. I'll give you an example of how professional, how good, how dominant those Soviets and Russians were uh, all through this streak. 1973, Bratislava, Czechoslovakia then, uh, the Russian pair with Nina and Zaitsev, great champions, started their long program. After about 30 seconds, the music stopped. But they kept skating, skated the entire program without music and won the gold medal. This is at the 73 World Championships. And in yep. a sense, no matter the sport, the great champions have a few things in common. That was the product of preparation, had to be, and resourcefulness and some sort of inner confidence. Okay, something crazy has happened. We'll carry on. Something extra.